This is a video about pelvic adhesions and the obliterated patch of Douglas. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. I came across this paper on Twitter this month looking for other reasons other than endometriosis for an obliterated patch of Douglas and that knowledge of obliteration is very useful prior to future surgery. I always look for pelvic adhesions routinely toward the end of a systematic scan and it's nice to combine it at that point with very gently looking for point-specific tenderness. Adhesions can be between any pelvic organs, but mainly between the bladder and uterus, ovary and uterus, ovary and pelvic side wall, uterus and bowel, and the posterior cervix and bowel, which we're calling true pouch of Douglas obliteration. There are lots of other reasons for pelvic adhesions, uh, and in this example, you can see dense adhesions to the front of the uterus and a normal pouch of Douglas. And this woman had these adhesions um, because she'd had two cesarean sections. You can see here that all of the uterus is adherent to bowel here with her section scar about there, but that the pouch of Douglas is completely mobile. This patient had also had a cesarean. And in this case, you can see that the bladder is densely adherent to her section scar that the bowel there is normally mobile. This patient had had a laparotomy for ulcerative colitis and you can see that there's a lot of bowel adhesions at the back of the uterus. Um, we can't quite see behind the cervix but certainly bowel is adherent to the back of the uterus. And in this case this patient has an ovarian cyst but there are dense adhesions to the uterus and it would be nice to know this prior to surgery. Thinking about adhesions behind the cervix and bowel called pouch of Douglas obliteration, you need to look for the sliding sign and judge the mobility between the back of the cervix and the bowel. These papers were published in 2013 describing how to look for mobility in this area. Where to have your probe is important and in an antiverted uterus, that's the anterior fornix, and you can see the cervix through that area and judge the sliding sign of the cervix against bowel. If you put your probe in the posterior fornix, you won't be able to see the cervix because it's pushed out of the way, but it's a good view for looking at bowel nodules and adhesions, but not the sliding sign. So in an antiverted uterus, you need to be in the anterior fornix. If the uterus is retroverted, if you put your probe in the anterior fornix, you'll be able to see the cervix, but what you won't see so clearly is the area of the torus just there because you've got a lot of tissue uh, in the way. So this is a retroverted uterus, this is the anterior fornix, and this is the posterior fornix. So if we're going to go into the posterior fornix, you won't be able to see the cervix because you've passed that already, but you'll be able to judge the sliding sign between the uterus and bowel and look for bowel nodules and adhesions. So that's where you'll be able to judge the uterine adhesions. And this is the pouch of Douglas. You need to look very carefully there too. Can be very difficult. So in a retroverted uterus, you need to look through the posterior fornix for the sliding sign. So this is an antiverted uterus. The probe is in the anterior fornix and this is a normal sliding sign. And the bowel and the uterus are moving completely freely, separately, almost in different directions. This is a, a, post, a retroverted uterus. The probe is now in the posterior fornix. And again, you can see lovely free mobility of the uterine fundus, but also just there, if you look, there's some free fluid. Maybe she's just ovulated and the pouch of Douglas looks nice and clearly mobile. This is a laparoscopy. And if you remember, if you do an ultrasound, this is the patient's right but at laparoscopy, we're looking toward the feet. So this is the patient's right, looking toward her feet. This is the back of the uterus. This is the right ovary and tube, left ovary and tube. And this is a, a normal, normal pelvis. And what you can see if you just push the ovary out of the way is that this is the torus uterinus. And this is where the uterosacral ligaments, one here and one here, insert on the back of the cervix. And this is the area where we're particularly from here down looking for a deep endometriosis. So there are lots of reasons for an obliterated pouch of Douglas reduced mobility behind the cervix. 
deep endometriosis, pelvic infection are two benign causes, but there are also malignant causes, malignancy itself and post-radiotherapy. Thinking about deep endometriosis causing an obliterated patch of Douglas. This again is the normal sliding sign. You can see lovely free mobility between, behind the cervix between uterus going one way and bowel the other. And then here you can see this is an abnormal sliding sign. You can see that as I'm pressing very gently in the anterior fornix, this moves, but it all moves together. So the bowel and the uterus all move together. And this is what that patient's laparoscopy looked like. That's a normal to compare. You can see this is an entirely free patch of Douglas. And here there are dense bowel adhesions to the back of the cervix caused by endometriosis. And that's caused this complete patch of Douglas obliteration. So in a retroverted uterus, that was the normal sliding sign. And here's an example of an abnormal sliding sign. And you can see here that there are adhesions all the way from the torus to the uterine fundus. These are bowel adhesions. All the way up. So this patient also has a frozen pelvis. You can see again, I'm in the anterior fornix. It's an antiverted uterus and there is no movement here at all. All that bowel is adhering to the back of the cervix. And that when you do a general scan, you can see many other features of endometriosis in this patient. We're going in the longitudinal plane from one adnexa to the other. You can see an antiverted uterus with severe adenomyosis. You can see a bowel nodule. You can see that she's got bilateral endometriomas and they are kissing, bowel nodule and deep endometriosis in the ligaments. So extensive endometriosis and a frozen pelvis. Pelvic infection can also cause an obliterated pouch of Douglas and it's caused either by pelvic inflammatory disease, chlamydia or Neisseria, or coral related infection. Here's an example of both. This one has a pelvic infection due to a chlamydia. And you can see that there is no mobility here in the pouch of Douglas at all. There are uh, extensive adhesions. But how can I tell that's pelvic inflammatory disease and not endometriosis? Well, I can see that the cervix itself is normal. This is the posterior vagina. There's the posterior fornix where the vagina attaches to the back of the cervix. That's the external os. The internal os is up there and this is the cervical canal. This cervix, the cervical stroma looks nice and normal. And so that's a good start. Normal cervix, the uterus was also normal, but I haven't shown you that. We can see here behind the cervix that there are uh, dense adhesions. This is fibrosis, but that the bowel that's adherent there is completely normal. This is muscularis. You can see the, the dark white dark, and that's the outer layer of um, muscle, the inner layer of muscle, and then a little bit of fibrous tissue in between. This is normal anterior muscularis and normal posterior. So although there are bowel adhesions, the muscularis is normal. And then in the transverse view, she's got a small ovarian cyst and another one. They're nearly kissing, they're adhering to the back of the uterus, but they are not endometriomas. Then uh, looking toward the left of Nexa in the longitudinal and the transverse plane, this was a small hydrosalpinx. And then looking at the torus, this is the longitudinal view. This is where the bladder attaches, the internal os, and there's the torus. So rotate on that point, 90 degrees anti-clockwise, and you've got the torus in transverse view. And you can judge in both of those. There is no deep endometriosis. Um, but mainly she also told me that she had a laparotomy 10 years prior for drainage of a pelvic abscess uh, due to chlamydia, pelvic inflammatory disease. This patient had a frozen pelvis due to infection caused by a coil. And here again, you can see we're in the anterior fornix of an antiverted uterus and there are dense adhesions behind the cervix here. And this is a frozen pelvis. How can I tell that that's what's caused her frozen pelvis, that it's a coil-related infection? Um, she's 60 and she'd had a copper coil in for 10 years. There's evidence of the copper coil. You can see that there are bowel adhesions, but again, the muscularis looks entirely normal. Doesn't mean she can't have endometriosis, but there's no evidence of it there. 
In this view, we're scanning toward the left at Nexa, and you can see that there's um, a mass there, and this was a, a tubo ovarian abscess, and it was not a malignancy. Malignancy is also a cause of obliterated pouch of Douglas, and I'll give you two examples. Um, in this example, just at the very beginning of your scan, as you put the probe in, this will feel hard. It feels that there's quite a lot of resistance to your probe. You have to be really, really gentle. So what makes me think that this pelvis is frozen due to malignancy? First of all, we could see the cervix there and there's a plaque of tumour behind the cervix. And if you put colour on, you can see it's got very strong, suspicious vascularity. Then looking in the longitudinal plane from one adnexa to another, there comes the, the uterus. We're going from one side to the other. And if you look carefully, you'll be able to see that she's got bilateral adnexal masses and they are multilocular solid and they are irregular. Starting again, that's one of the masses, irregular multilocular solid. There's the uterus, there's the plaque of tumour behind and there's the other ovary. There are better views elsewhere, but it's just to make the point. And then looking transabdominally, um, I always look at the omentum, and this is what you can see. If you ask the patient to take some nice deep breaths, you can see this is done with a transabdominal probe in the epigastrium. You can see this is the omentum sliding against the peritoneum, and there is a metastasis. And this patient had stage 3 ovarian cancer with a frozen pelvis. This is another example of malignancy. Again, from the beginning of the scan, you feel that there's resistance to the probe and you can see that when you very gently press in and out, everything moves together. And what strikes you here is you've got a very abnormal cervix and you've got a little bud into the fibrous tissue at the back there. But how can I be sure this is malignancy causing her frozen pelvis? This is a longitudinal view of the uterus and what you can see is that the cervix is abnormal, that the endometrium is thickened and that there's a hematometra. When you put some colour on the cervix, you can see this is very suspicious vascularity. Uh, you just do not see that in a, in a benign cervix. You might have thought that this was blood, but it isn't. It's uh, abnormal cervix. And in the longitudinal plane, if we scan again from one side to another, you can see this more clearly. You can see that the cervix is grossly abnormal, heterogeneous, with a little bud there. And you can see that the uterus is almost axial, but that this is involving that, and there is a small hematometra, a bit of fluid in the cavity. And this patient had cervical cancer. So another cause of obliterated pouch of Douglas is after radiotherapy. And uh, in this case, you can see the bladder here, you can see the cervix here, and everything was fixed together. It's an axial uterus, so quite difficult in this view to see the endometrium. But all of this was fixed. I'm sorry I don't have a, a video for this uh, case. How can I tell that this is a frozen pelvis due to radiotherapy? Well, she's 70. She told me she'd had radiotherapy for cervical cancer 30 odd years ago. And when we're looking at the cervix, it was just fibrotic. There's no evidence of active tumour there. Um, there's just a tiny bit of vascularity. That was all normal and not suspicious. Um, and when I'm looking, this is the cervix, frontal uterus, fundus in the back. Again, you can see some nice normal bowel adherent to the back of the cervix. There was no evidence of endometriosis. Of course, you don't expect to see endometriosis in somebody who's 70, but you can sometimes see um, some residual deep endometriosis in the bowel wall. And everything was just glued together. So this is adhesions um, due to radiotherapy, adhering the cervix to everything surrounding it, bladder, parametria and bowel. So some take home messages. There are many reasons for a frozen pelvis, but in my experience, endometriosis and malignancy are the commonest. Start by looking at the sliding sign behind the cervix in every routine pelvic ultrasound. It's so important. Then start looking for pelvic adhesions elsewhere in the pelvis. They are common, especially after surgery or after infection. 
because knowledge of adhesions is very valuable information in the decision making about whether the patient needs to have future surgery and if so, how. Thank you.